this group do you like? Um, okay, so I do like Angie. Okay. Oh, you like Angie? I do. Oh, okay. I do, because Angie can take my toughness. Like, oh, she can, okay. She can handle me. Okay. I, I like Monica. Yep. She's pretty. Hey, guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Season 4, Reunion Part 2. And was it just me, or did it feel like the second part felt a bit rushed, or I don't know, it didn't feel as cohesive as the first part? Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm getting a bit tired of Salt Lake City. It's been a wild ride. I'm tired of hearing Monica and all her nonsense. So maybe I'm kind of getting a bit weary, but I did feel like the second part was a bit all over the place. But anyhow, it was still entertaining. And Mary, I have some choice words for you because it's apparent that you really don't like a lot of these women. And I just feel like, why keep being around women that you don't like and don't respect? And there were several times where I felt like Mary needed to be checked. And we'll talk more about that later on, but I'm getting tired of Mary and her attitude. I think that overall she is very unhappy and doesn't bring a whole lot because Mary was in the first eight or nine episodes and then the rest of the season, we didn't see her. I forgot all about her. But y'all, with all that being said, let's just jump right on into it because you guys already know that we don't have a minute to spare. So we open up the second part with the continuation of Angie and Monica going at it. Now, from where I was sitting, I feel like Angie was reading Monica. I really do. The whole thing about the Range Rover under the carport and spending money for a purse, I feel like Angie K low-key ate. Angie had me screaming when she said, and by the way, nobody wants you here. I said, get her again, please. <laughs> I'ma just scoot on over and let you whack him. Get him again. Get him for me. And I know that all the Monica fans are going to come in my comments saying, well, what would they have talked about if Monica wasn't on the show and she made this season? And while I can always give credit where credit is due, because Monica definitely had the women working this season, I will always give props where they're due. But we're not going to sit up here and deny that Monica's also very thirsty, desperate, a social climber, a wannabe and she was low-key obsessed with being on TV. And she gives very much fraudulent. The same way I don't see it for Anne Marie and other new housewives who came in thirsty, I don't see it for Monica. And it doesn't help that I don't believe a word that comes out of her mouth either. Now, in the midst of all this, Meredith jumps in and she's like, Andy, can you have them turn the heat up because we're freezing? And I don't know what it is, but I've noticed that every franchise complains about how cold it is when they're at the reunion. And I don't know if that's some sort of ploy to get them to argue more because they're so cold and they're frustrated and tired and angry. I don't know if that's why they keep it so cold, but I feel like every single cast always complains about how cold it is. And I'm like, you guys have the money turn the heat up. The way Andy would be annoyed with me because I would bring a blanket. <laughs> so now we change gears and Andy wants to talk about Monica's situation with her mother. Andy starts it off by saying that it was heartbreaking watching that all back. And then he goes on to ask her about Bermuda and if Monica ever got to the bottom of why her family in Bermuda didn't want to see her. So Monica says that it's still an unsolved mystery and her and her mom still aren't speaking. Now, Monica, when that episode aired, you got on Twitter, you and your mom were going back and forth and you tweeted to your mom that you were sorry for accusing her of saying that she was the one behind that and that she didn't do it. So now at the reunion, why are you saying it's still an unsolved mystery when you literally said on Twitter that your mom didn't do it? And I get irritated how 
Andy sometimes let a lot of things slide? Because why didn't he question her about that tweet where she pretty much said that her mom was not behind the family not wanting to see her? I feel like a lot of these women get off so easy at these reunions because Andy will let it slide. They'll give Andy some BS answer and then he'll accept it and move on to the next question. And it drives me nuts. And again, I think that Andy is great at what he does, but it's times like that where I feel like, Andy, I wish that you would just press them a little bit more because some things are not adding up. Now, I wasn't surprised hearing that Monica's mom had messaged production asking if she could go on the trip. We already know that Monica's mom is desperate. They're both desperate and they both were excited for a free trip. But Monica goes on to say that her mom threw a whole fit because she couldn't go on the trip. And I said, let's think about this for a minute. Your daughter is the one who's on the show. You're just a secondary character. So why on earth would you be going on this trip? And it's like, don't you have any shame? Where's your sense of pride? The fact that you were literally throwing a whole fit? It's not about you, Linda. It's about your daughter. So now Andy starts pressing Monica about her living situation when she was younger. Remember how Monica's mom had left her to live? with a family in Pennsylvania while she went to New York. So Andy wants to know what profession was she trying to pursue in New York? So we find out that Linda was trying to be famous. She was trying to be in television. And Andy was like, oh, okay. And I said, oh, it all makes sense. They will do anything for fame and a check. So I would not be surprised if Monica and her mom plan to have all these fights and arguments on TV because they knew that it would draw in viewers and have people talking. So now Andy goes on to ask Lisa if watching the show back made her rethink her opinion about Monica and her mom. And so Lisa says, well, that's a two part question because at Angie's Greek Easter, when I met Linda, she was charming and funny and so sweet. But after watching the show, I realized that her and her mother have a very tumultuous relationship and it's none of my business. So Monica thanks Lisa for saying that and then she goes on to acknowledge that looking at it from an outsider's point of view, she can understand why people would think that she's a complete bitch to her mom. And Monica being an outsider to this group, she's a newbie on this cast, seeing her at that Greek Easter party, it's definitely gonna have people confused and looking at Monica sideways like, girl, why are you treating your mom like this? Because we don't know the backstory. And that's another thing. When people don't know you that well, even if you are in the right, you're still going to look crazy like you're the villain because people don't know you and your mom's history. And I think that's where Monica went wrong because I know that when my recap dropped for that episode, I was like, Monica, you're out of line. So now Monica goes on to say that at Angie's Greek Easter party, her mom was more concerned with impressing the housewives than being there for Monica. So now Whitney jumps in and she says, oh yeah, I agree 100% because your mom looked like she wanted to be in your shoes. And I can definitely acknowledge that because I noticed that Linda was definitely on her best behavior. She was trying to be super sweet and super charming, super nice. And she had on her suit. She was trying to flirt with Angie K's dad. I mean, Miss Mamas was out there trying to land her either a spot on the show or a man with some money. It was evident that her mom was there to secure the bag for herself in some shape, way, or form. So Andy agrees with that. And then he goes on to ask Monica, if she believes that her mom was also auditioning to be on Housewives for herself. So Monica tells a story the day of her last audition to be on the show, she went to her mom's house and she says that she was crying because she thought that she bombed the audition. So now her mom says, girl, take my hands. We're going to say a prayer. And her mom says, dear God, if it's not Monica, then let me get the spot. Let me be on Housewives. I was just like, girl, what? But again, I'm not surprised to hear that because both Monica and her mother are severely damaged. They're both the same. They both want fame by any means necessary. 
It's a very toxic relationship where you have a mother who is jealous of her daughter. And I'm not really surprised why Monica acts the way she does. But I said, can you imagine? Like that's really sick to think about parents who are jealous of their children. And to take it even one step further, you really see that a lot of people were not equipped emotionally or mentally to be parents. And it's no shade, but there's something severely wrong for you to be jealous of your own children. Don't you want your kids to go further and succeed? I'll never understand that mindset. That's, it's crazy enough to be jealous of anybody, but to be jealous of your own children and pray on their downfall that's some serious psychosis right there and the fact that her mom even prayed such a prayer is disgusting but also linda if you were to be on housewives what would you be offering no shade sis but um i do not want to see linda on my screen either we're not getting any fashions we're not getting any money it's like another monica just older. So now Andy starts asking if Linda has always sabotaged Monica's success. And Monica says yes. She gives a story of how when she was first dating her now ex-husband Mike, when she brought him to Linda's house, Linda saw how happy she was. And after that visit, Linda said that he was banned from ever coming to her house because she was upset that Monica was so happy and she felt like Mike was taking her daughter away from her. Monica's mom gives me those vibes of she'd sleep with her daughter's boyfriend or husband. So now Whitney jumps in and she says that until you see your situation from the outside, you don't realize how much you're being abused. Now we all know that Whitney has a very strained relationship with her dad and she and her mom weren't speaking for a long time. Now I have to say, finding out that Whitney and her mom didn't speak for 16 years, did we ever hear the backstory about that? I feel like we know that Whitney and her dad were trying to get close. Her dad was struggling with addiction. She had put him in a rehab center and she was paying for the rehab. He stopped talking to her. But I never understood the whole situation between her and her mom. I feel like she never talked about it. So hearing that they were estranged for over a decade and now they're okay again, I was surprised to hear that. Then Andy goes on to ask Heather about what's the status between her and her mom. Heather says that her mom will text her occasionally for her birthday and for Christmas. That's about it. But she goes on to acknowledge that she understood that this would happen when she joined this show and left the church. Now this part definitely had my attention when Andy started talking about Angie's Greek Easter party. And he's like, did somebody get thrown down the stairs? Remember when that episode aired, you had Monica saying that she had been pushed down the stairs and she was threatening to sue Angie. They're talking about that. So Monica says that after that whole conversation with her mom, she was going downstairs to get her daughters so that they could leave. So she says that she was crying. The tears were in her eyes. She couldn't see that well. So she reached out for the railing. There was no railing and she tumbled down the steps. Bravo plays the unseen footage and we see Monica tumble down. You had the guest stop and help her up. She's crying saying, I want to go home. I want to leave. And I said, now, Angie, I love you. You have a gorgeous home. But girl, why don't you have a banister? So Angie says, well, let's talk about the real matter. The real matter at hand is the fact that you threatened to sue me. So now you have Monica saying, but did I sue you? So now Andy jumps in and he says, but you did threaten to sue her. We have the tweets. They pull up the tweets and you do see that Monica was threatening to sue her. So now Angie goes on to state that Monica threw her shoe and it almost hit a toddler. So of course Monica's screaming. And do you notice that every time people do that, they're trying to talk over you so that way we can hear the truth. That's how it felt with Monica. And I loved how Angie gave that quick shade. She said, you know what? I'll let you talk, then I'll talk because that's how grown-ups speak. And I'm good with children so I can handle Monica. I said again, Angie, I am here for it. <laughs> so Monica says that one shoe flew off, the other shoe was hanging on 
her foot, and then she threw it down saying that she wanted to go home. I'm so sorry, but Monica made a complete ass of herself at that Greek Easter party. And the fact that her daughters heard and saw all that carrying on and all the other kids saw that, and I felt so bad because in that episode, her daughters were having a great time. And the fact that their mom cut the fun short because she's in a mood, it's like, I don't know y'all, Monica is very miserable. She really is. Cause I still think that she could have handled that whole thing with her mom in a better way. If they want to have a blowout argument, that's fine. But I just feel like don't do all this in somebody else's home. Then Monica says that she went back upstairs all bloody and bruised to film that final scene with her mom. That's when she told her mom to get her own effing Uber. And then she went to urgent care. So Angie's like, well, are you done? Because I want to tell my side of the story. So Angie goes on to say that she had some family who left because they didn't feel safe with Monica around. I said the shade of it all. <laughs> Honestly, in a lot of households, they would have kicked Monica out. They would have said, girl, don't come in here with all your craziness, cursing your mom out, fighting. Then you fall down my steps trying to sue me. Like, no, she would have been escorted out. <laughs> so then Angie goes on to say that Monica tried to say that Angie should pay for the bill for her head scan. And she was like, production paid for that. And I said, Monica, you're not helping your case. This is giving grifter energy. Because why are you asking Angie for the money for your head scan, knowing good and damn well the production pays for all that? So you were trying to get some pocket money from Angie. One thing about Monica, she's gonna always try and throw somebody else under the bus. She goes on to say, well, to be fair, I spoke to Meredith about it and she told me, well, if you want her house, you could take her house. Now, you know that Meredith does not play. She said, I did not tell you that. So Monica says, yes, you did. And Meredith said, no, I did not. All I said was, it's a liability. And Angie was quick with the shade. She said, so apparently you make a living out of suing people, huh? So you have Monica saying, I've never sued anybody in my whole life. I was like, girl, why are you lying? This lady is a pathological liar. Even Angie was like, girl, you have several lawsuits under all your names. I said, girl, read her again. <laughs> and you're going to always get it again and again and again. Angie gets those digs in. And I don't know why y'all keep saying that Monica's a great reader. Calling somebody ugly and old, that's not reading. How old are you, five? Anybody can do that. <laughs> now, Andy, I want to know... Why were you so quick to brush over the whole lawsuit between Monica and Heather and Beauty Lab? Because Heather goes on to say, well, you're suing me. So Monica says, no, I'm not. I responded to your lawsuit. It's a countersuit. And then Heather goes on to say that it's a suit over collections. And now you have Angie jumping in saying, pay your bills. Now here's my thing. The way this whole lawsuit between Heather and Monica has been hyped up in the press, I couldn't believe that we only got 30 seconds on that. I was disappointed. I was upset. I said, Andy, you're not going to press Monica about that? Why didn't you ask her about the injections that she got that were $2,000 and why she didn't pay them? We've heard so much about it. So it felt like a complete letdown to only get 30 seconds about the whole lawsuit between Monica and Heather. Now we sort of changed gears here. Andy's asking Lisa if Lisa regrets saying that nobody wants to be Monica's mom. So Lisa says, honestly, I was just returning the same energy because you were mean to me all season. You called me ugly and old. I mean, you were really nasty to me. So, so I was just giving you the same energy. So Monica starts screaming saying, well, Angie K was saying that Meredith looks like a trampoline with eyes, that's okay. And Lisa's like, Monica, Monica, I'm just saying you called me names all season long. And if you guys watch all my recaps of this season, I was on Lisa's side for the most part. I felt like Monica was very nasty to Lisa. And you know why I think that? I think that Monica is jealous of Lisa, so that's where all this anger stemmed from. But I just feel like, how dare you call somebody all these names and try to clown their appearance. And the gag is Lisa looks good. So you calling her ugly and old falls flat because 
she does look really good. I've seen her in person both years at BravoCon. I've met her and in person, she looks great. So again, the reads aren't landing because she does look good. So you just sound dumb saying that she's unattractive and talking about her age. It's like, okay, girl, I guess. But Monica, you get angry, you fly off the handle and you try to go for the jugular so you can't be upset when somebody else goes low with you. You can't be the villain and the victim at the same time. That's just not how this works. Now, was Monica trying to say touche because she says touche? And Heather was like, what the hell is touche? And I was like, yeah, like, what is she talking about? <laughs> So Monica and Lisa go at it for another few minutes and Lisa says, bottom line, Monica, you are very nasty to women. You're very manipulative and this is why your mom talks to a tree. So Monica's upset and she says, oh great, throw my mom in my face. Like that's just so nice. And I said, Monica, you have to understand that a lot of us can see right through you and it's giving that all your moves are calculated. Like even when you were crying during certain times during this reunion, I just got the impression that you're doing this for sympathy. I'm just not buying it. There are certain people when they cry, I feel like they're just doing it just to get sympathy. And Monica is one of those people. Now I think that Heather jumped in and said something to Lisa's defense. So now you have Monica saying, Heather, I don't know what your problem is with me dead ass. And Heather says, girl, stay tuned. Like you're gonna find out real soon. And I said, now Monica, you're still on the hook for all these beauty lab procedures. So maybe she's mad about that on top of you making that fake page. Now, let me address this quickly. I saw there are screenshots floating around with some texts going around saying that Heather already knew about Monica being behind the fake page. If that's the case, then everybody on this cast can go and they can start over because I think that that's really crazy that you would do all this for a storyline. Because honestly, I don't want a weirdo around me who would go to such lengths to be in this group and to be on this show. That's a no for me. No. Uh -uh. So I would have called Monica out the minute I found out about her being behind this page. Heather, if this is true that you knew all about this and you were in on it too, and you only did this for a big award-winning moment for the finale, then shame on you. And I hope that it's not true. And he goes on to ask Monica, why does she have so many names and identities when you Google her? So Monica explains that her maiden name was Darnell, her married name was Fowler. And then Andy goes on to ask her, well, what's Delgado? So she says that Delgado is from her father's side. Now, the way I was confused, Andy was also confused. He's like, okay, so where did Garcia come from? So we find out that Garcia is her mom's last name. She tells a story about how her mom was ridiculed about her last name and she changed it. I couldn't keep up with the story. I said one thing about Monica, Monica has more stories than a comic book, so I don't know what's true and what's not. But anyhow, she goes on to say that she's only used three last names, not four. I said, oh wow, okay. <laughs> Honestly, I would not be surprised if Monica has all these last names and is hiding out from creditors or something like that, because this just doesn't make any sense. And the fact that they had Monica under three different last names at Beauty Lab and she didn't pay the tab under any of those names, I don't know y'all. I just think that this woman is a scammer. But Andy was still confused. He wants to know, why was Monica's mom so confused about all the names? And so Monica tells this story of how she confided in her mother and how her mom used that against her to embarrass her and how people on this cast were talking about her because they were saying that she only used these last names to appear more Latina to get on the show. So Lisa's confused. She's like, who said that? And of course, since Monica can't stand Lisa, she accuses Lisa of saying that. Lisa was like, I never said that. 
That was Jen Shah who said that. That was not me. And Lisa goes on to say that Jen was always talking about how Monica was using all these names. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Jen said that because Jen was hateful and she talked about everybody. She was always saying something about somebody on this cast. So yeah, I would not be surprised if Jen did make a remark like that because that's just who Jen was. Not gonna hold you guys, I wasn't that interested with the whole section about Lisa's son going on his missionary trip, but I did think it was funny to hear that he had gotten his visa denied because he sent in a picture of his abs. I was like, why would he do that? <laughs> I'm not going to hold you guys. I have no interest in talking about Heather being upset that she felt left out of being a part of Jack's mission. I thought that Heather was doing way too much this season. And I really suspect that Heather low key wants to be back in the Mormon church. That's what it looks like to me because the way she gets so emotional about it, the way she was so triggered by Lisa, having that going away party for him and she wasn't invited. It was like, girl, why would you be invited? You and Lisa weren't even on the best terms at that point. So again, I didn't understand it. And then seeing Heather and Whitney go back at it, I'm like, I can't deal with Whitney running her mouth. So yeah, I was over it. I said, okay, let's bring out Mary and let's wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> and was it just me or did it feel like Whitney was fighting at the end of that couch to be seen and heard? Because I can tell you this right now, I would not be upset if Whitney got demoted to a friend of, because what storyline does Whitney have? So they all take a break, they all get some lunch, Monica's in her dressing room and now Mary comes in. So Monica's like, oh my gosh, Mary, it's a bloodbath. Have you been watching? And Mary's like, no. So she goes on to say that Monica needs to speak up more, make her voice heard, and that she has her back. I said, okay, Mary. I was just so irritated. I feel like she's only doing it to be rebellious, in my opinion, because I don't understand how Mary likes Monica out of all people. But again, I digress. But Monica, how has it been a bloodbath? You haven't been a wallflower. You've been screaming and cursing back at everybody this entire reunion. So don't act like you're a little victim who hasn't been heard. You've been screaming the most out of everybody. So everybody's back on stage. So now Andy goes on to ask Mary, why didn't she want to attend the season two reunion? And Mary says, because she didn't like what was going on, what had been done to her all season long, and the fact that lies were being spread about her, she didn't feel comfortable. So now Andy brings up what Mary said when she was on Watch What Happens Live with Z-Way and how she made that joke saying that the show needed her. So now Andy wants to know from everybody else if they feel the same way that they needed Mary for the show to be a success. So Heather says, well, yeah, because you never know what you're gonna expect from Mary. She's great TV, so yeah, we definitely needed her back. So Angie K jumps in to pay Mary a compliment she said something to the effect of Mary is great comedic relief. And now you have Mary saying, Angie, why are you saying anything? It's your first season. You just got here. And I was just like, this is what I'm talking about. Mary is extremely rude. And I was like, Mary, do you listen? She was paying you a compliment. She's so rude and I can't stand it. It's annoying. And I hate how people give her a pass. Like, oh my gosh, that's just Mary. She's so quirky. And honestly speaking, I feel like Mary only says this stuff because she knows that they're not witty enough and they're not quick enough to read her back. Because I get the feeling that if Mary were on a different cast, i.e. Potomac or Atlanta, you guys know what I'm trying to say. I'm saying it without saying it. But I feel like if she were on a different cast, her attitude would be a bit different. She's able to get away with this crap because they're too afraid to read her because they don't want to be deemed as racist and because they're not good readers. Now, I'm not saying that everybody is innocent, but what I am saying is that I don't like how Mary is just rude for no reason. It grates on my nerves. And even Andy said, Mary, Angie was paying you a compliment. And she was like, oh, she was? If you would stop being so rude and just listen, 
you would have heard her compliment you and say that you're funny and that you were needed for the show. So now Andy goes on to ask Mary, why was she so tough on Angie? And Mary gives this weak excuse saying that Angie reminded her so much of Jen Shaw. That's why she was so tough on her. And then she goes on to add that Angie is really touchy feely and she doesn't like all that. I said, Mary, just stop it. You just enjoy being mean. That's all it is. You're just a rude person. Let's call a spade a spade. So Andy wants to know the million dollar question, who does Mary like? So Mary says, well, I like Monica because she's pretty and I do like Angie because she can handle my toughness. And I said, again, if I were Angie, I would have checked you because how dare you talk to me like I'm nothing. I do not like the way she talks to Angie K. She's very rude. And I'm not gonna sit up here and make excuses just because it's another black woman on the screen. I don't care about race or ethnicity. If you're rude, you're rude. And I'm not going to give Mary a pass just because she's a fellow black woman. I'm not doing that. And you're not tough on her. You're just, you're just rude. And Angie does not deserve that. And that's a really shitty reason to like somebody because they accept your rude behavior. So you want a doormat? Is that what you want? Then she goes on to say that she also loves Meredith. And Meredith says, I love you too. Now we knew that because Meredith and Mary have been close since the beginning. And here's what really got me. Mary is the definition of she can dish it out, but she can't take it. When she turned to Heather and said, Heather, I did like you until I saw what you said about my house. And Heather was like, I didn't say anything bad about your house. And Mary says, yes, you did. And they played the tapes back. And Heather said, Mary's house is just like her. It's her style. You can't deny that. Mary's style is very eclectic. It's very unique. Some might love it, some might not. But for Mary to say that Heather was being phony, I just said, excuse me? So now Andy points out that Mary called Heather inbred and Mary's like, well, I think that the house comments are worse. And I said, are you serious right now? Somebody saying that your style is eclectic and it's a lot, that's worse than you calling somebody inbred? And then Mary saying, well, I say it to people's faces and she said it behind my back. And I said, but Mary, let's not forget that you've talked about them behind their backs. Remember in season two, I think you were saying something. You got mad at Heather and you were like, yeah, with her chubby self. Remember that? And now you want to sit up here and cry and be all hypersensitive because somebody said something about your house that you didn't like. You called that lady inbred. Like, what's wrong with you? So Heather defends herself and she says, Mary, I was not making fun of your home. I said that your home was very grand and that you have great taste. So Mary says, well, okay, but here's the thing. I had my house before this show and you just got your house after the show. So Heather's like, girl, don't do that because Beauty Lab does very well. And I said, Mary, you want to sit up here and flex on somebody, but let's talk about how that home is dated. Let's talk about that. That green carpet and those chairs and that kitchen, it's a bit outdated, sis. It could stand to be renovated. How dare you try to come at her saying, oh, well, you got your house after the show. I'm like, you are aware that Heather was married to a very wealthy man. She's getting that good child support, beauty lab money, the show money, and the book money. I mean, she, she's good. She's set. And you low-key contradicted yourself when Andy said, you say a lot of horrible things to people. And then when you say, well, they can say it back to me. And I said, okay, but when they do say it back to you, you claim that you're offended and you're upset with them and you don't like them. So which one is it? You cannot take what you dish out. And again, like I always say, you don't get to be the villain and the victim at the same time. You have to pick and say what you want, but I thought that Lisa made valid points when she said, but you say bad things about us. And then she was like, Lisa, just shut up. Why is she talking? I don't like her. And I said, but Mary, you can't take it. What Lisa's saying is correct. You say horrible things about them. Then when they shade you, now you want to get upset. Like that's not how this works. Now Andy brings up Mary's son and if he's actually married. 
So Mary says, well, I don't know. I haven't seen the paperwork. I still refer to her as his girlfriend. So now Andy's asking her, how does it feel to be living under the same roof as her son and his girlfriend slash wife? And now we see some unseen footage where Mary is telling her makeup artist that she overheard the girlfriend and him having sex and she was making all these noises. And she's like, he's not that good in bed. So Andy wants to know, what does she mean by that? So Mary's like, yeah, I was walking down the hallway and I heard all this screaming and I thought that somebody was hurt. And then she goes on to say that she opened the door while they were having sex. And so she closed the door, she was horrified. Then she goes on to say that when she saw his girlfriend slash wife, she told her like, next time, don't be doing all that screaming. If he's not that good, don't gas up his head. Like, let him know that he's not that good, but don't do all that. And I was just like, Mary, why do you care? Like, why? Like, why do you care so much about your son's sex life with his wife slash girlfriend? Why are you so invested? That shouldn't even be crossing your mind. I mean, yes, I'm all for women being honest and not faking orgasms because a lot of these men are out here not doing a damn thing and women are out here faking and stroking their egos. But at the end of the day, you need to stay out of your son's sex life. It's none of your business. If the girl is faking, let her fake. <laughs> Worry about when's the last time you got some from Robert Sr. And if I had to guess, I would say that the last time you guys did anything was maybe 30 years ago when you got married. And it's no shade, but I don't see any physical attraction at all. And you even said in season one that when you guys first got married on the honeymoon, you didn't even consummate the marriage. You lied and said that you were on your period for like three weeks. So that right there shows that you were not attracted to that man. But again, I digress. So one of the biggest moments of this reunion was the conversation between Whitney and Mary. Andy wants to know from Whitney, how did she feel about Mary coming back on the show? So Whitney says that she was really excited to repair things with Mary and Mary's looking at her like, girl, please. So Whitney says, well, I was excited to repair things with Mary. And then Mary says, well, I don't care. And I said, at that point, I would have just said, you know what, Mary, you obviously don't like me. You don't want to like me. You're not ever going to like me. And that's fine. But I'll be damned if I'm sitting up there groveling and begging somebody for their friendship or for their respect. It's not happening. So now Andy reads a viewer question asking Whitney, what exactly did she mean when she called Mary and her husband predators? Did she mean sexual or was she talking about scheming for financial gain? Now Whitney, the answer that you gave was a bit weak in my opinion. You didn't really answer it. All you said was, well, I came from a high demand religion myself. So that's why I said that and I apologize for that. And I said, no girl, let's answer the question. What exactly did you mean when you called them predators? Like, let us know. Because that answer, in my opinion, did not cut it. But Whitney does clear up that she never meant that they were sexual predators. And Mary says, yeah, I know. And neither is my husband. Now, personally, I believe that Whitney was alluding to them being predatory with the church money. That's the impression that I got when she said that in season two. So here's where things go left. Andy brings up Whitney's tweets about Mary because Whitney had tweeted something like, I can't believe that this evil woman wants to talk about growth. So Whitney defends her tweet by saying that she spent a lot of money working on herself in therapy. So it was upsetting to hear Mary talk about them all like that. So now Mary's like, so it was okay to call me evil? And now Whitney says, but you also tweeted bad things about me. So Mary says, well, yeah, I did call you racist. So now Andy goes on to ask Mary if she really believes that Whitney's racist. And Mary says, yes, everybody's stunned. And personally, I don't believe that Mary really thinks that Whitney's racist. I think that Mary just hates Whitney so bad that she'll say anything to defame her character. Now, listen, I could be wrong. Maybe Mary does think that Whitney's racist. Who knows? But you could tell that everybody was shocked. Whitney was like, oh my gosh, Mary, that really breaks my heart. 
Now here's where I need for white women to just learn how to sit and listen. Lisa Barlow, I'm talking to you. Because when Mary said, well, I believe that because they were brought up in a religion which teaches them that black people are bad, that our skin color is cursed, and that black people go to a different heaven where we'll be the hell. So Heather co-signs on what Mary's saying and she says she's right. The Mormon doctrine is deeply rooted in racism. And Lisa, like I told you, here's where you need to shut up. Because for you to say, no, it's not. It's not racist at all. And I think she named, I guess there's a black person who was pretty high up in the Mormon church. She was like, he's black and he's Mormon. And I said, Lisa, that's the same as saying, well, I'm not racist, I have a black friend. Like, girl, stop. And it's clear that you obviously don't know a whole lot about your religion because I thought that everybody knew that the Mormon religion was not here for black people like that. So for you to deny that there's racism, I was like, you're in heavy denial. And again, just be quiet. Just sit there and look cute. So Whitney goes on to say that that's a huge accusation to make about her being racist. And she goes on to add that the views of the Mormon church were a big reason why she left the church. So Whitney's trying to make a point. She's agreeing with Mary and she says, we are white women with white privilege. And Mary interrupts her and she's like, keep preaching Whitney. You're saying some good things. And I'm like, Mary, do you like Whitney or not? Because the way you're acting now, I'm confused. One minute you're saying that she's racist, then the next minute is, oh yeah, girl, you're preaching today. Like you're saying some good stuff. I'm like, you obviously don't hate her that bad. I, I don't know. I think that Mary talks out two sides of her face. And I think that her real issue is that she's still angry at Whitney for calling her a predator and she's holding a grudge. That's what I think. And again, I'm not saying that she doesn't have the right to be angry about that because those are really harsh words to say that somebody's a predator. I mean, I, I would definitely understand her being upset about that, but I feel like saying that Whitney's racist and then you're saying that, oh girl, you're preaching today, like you're saying some good stuff that I agree with, which one is it? Either you think that she's racist and you can't stand her and that she's dumb and a little girl, but then on the other hand, you're like, oh yeah, girl, you're preaching. Like, I like that. I don't know. I don't get it. I think that Mary half the time has no idea what she's talking about. So now Whitney says, look, Mary, I just want to ask you one thing. What have I done personally to you to make you think that I'm racist? So Mary's like, well, you're not my color. You wouldn't understand it. And then Whitney says, I understand that, but please let me know. Have I done or said anything to you that would indicate that I was racist? So Mary says no. And then Whitney says, thank you. And I said, again, it just shows you that Mary blows with the wind because you literally said five minutes ago, I think that Whitney's racist a hundred percent. And now you're saying, well, no, you've never said anything to me. I don't think you're racist. It's just like, you just can't throw out certain labels recklessly like that. You can't. You can't. If I really believe that somebody's racist, I'm not changing my mind five minutes later and saying, oh no, you're not. Come on. So now we're down to the last few minutes of this second part. And Andy wants to know Mary's opinion on the finale. So Mary's like, honestly, I feel like it was a bit much. I said, okay, Mary. I said, girl, they gave us one of the best episodes of all time. And you want to say that it was a bit much? So Lisa was pissed. She was like, what? How would you feel, Mary, if somebody called you a dumb bitch? So Mary goes on to say that she wouldn't care because people call her all sorts of things on social media, especially on Twitter. And I said, but Mary, just 20 minutes ago, you were upset because you felt like Heather was bad mouthing your house. Now it's, well, I don't care what people say. Well, obviously you do. Now at this point, Heather pulls out her phone and she plays another audio recording of Monica talking about Mary. I think she was saying that she was going to DM Mary from her burner account. I don't know what she was saying, but 
she said something about somebody's a dumb bitch or something like that. So Monica's like, I was not talking about Mary. And Lisa and Heather are like, yes, you were. So they're going back and forth. Monica's like, you've never called anybody a dumb bitch before, really? Now you have Monica cursing Heather out. And she goes on to say that Reality Von Tees was six people, not just her. I said, Lord, the way Monica is going to come up with excuse after excuse after excuse about this whole burner account. Girl, just fess up. You've been caught. Just own up to it. You did that whole photo shoot for Instagram saying that you're a gossip girl and you're reality Von Tees. So girl, come clean. Let's stop with all this. Oh no, it wasn't just me. It was six other people. It was this person, that person, the man on the moon. Girl, we don't want to hear it. But we end this second part with Mary saying that they need to let Monica talk. And Andy says, yeah, they're going to let her talk because they're all anxious to hear what she has to say. And that's where it ends. Now, like I said, I felt like part two was a bit all over the place. And I was just so irritated with Mary at the end. She really pissed me off. I'm just so tired of her acting like she's allowed to say whatever she wants and nobody can ever say anything to her. That's just not how this works, especially not on these shows. But yeah, that was my recap. Thank you all so much for watching and you already know what to do. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you all later. Bye.